Exceptional Field Service Delivery creates, magnifies, and sustains exceptional customer experiences and brand loyalty. Welcome to the Super FM Podcast, Field Service Your Way, with me, Michael Israel. I'll lead conversations about critical issues in today's field service ecosystem with knowledgeable and experienced service management professionals. Now, let's learn something. Hello and welcome to Super FM Field Service Your Way with your host, Michael Israel. Michael, what's going on? Well, not too much. How are you today, Eric? I'm doing fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm excited you brought a guest on the show today. I did, indeed. Uh, we have the founder of Field Nation, Manuel Khan, and it's a great pleasure to uh, have Manuel uh, join us on this podcast. I know he's extremely busy, so Manuel, thank you so much for making time in your day to join us on this uh, podcast. Thanks for having me, Michael. Super excited to be with you. Thanks so much for, for joining the podcast today. I think the, our audience will be very excited to hear what you have to say. So let me start by asking you a question. You founded Field Nation how long ago now? It's uh, coming up 15 years. Yeah, so you've been there for a long time and uh, you've obviously had some great success. And uh, we at Zuper are now a, part, a proud partner, I should say, of Field Nation as well. What, uh, can you give us a little bit of background about what was your impetus in founding Field Nation? What did you hope to accomplish? Yeah, great question. Uh, like I said, it's been 15 years. So we started Field Nation in 2008. And if you remember, that was middle of Great yeah. Recession. Absolutely. Hard to forget. Hard to forget. And yes. Going into the recession, we saw massive trend of, you know, workers uh, wanted to be more independent freelancers. Yep. And during, during the recession, we saw the companies, businesses, not wanting to have fixed cost, uh, you know, field service uh, resources, uh, and rather move towards more on-demand because one of the things that recession did, it worked as a catalyst in terms of moving the businesses more toward aligning their revenue stream with their cost structure. Mm -hmm. And so when they got into the recession and they saw it's very hard to maintain a fixed cost resource, uh, you know, either having a overtime problem or you know bench time problem actually it was more of a bench time problem during a recession right. they thought uh, they, we saw that there is more to more uh, interest towards uh, you know on demand services and that was really you know kind of what uh, gave us uh, the market signal if you will uh, to to build a platform that will connect businesses to the independent workers in the field uh, and meet the uh, workers' desire to be independent, build their own businesses, be their own bosses, and the businesses' desire to align their cost structure more with their revenue structure. Revenue structure. Yeah, and also to balance, or I guess balance maybe is not the right word, but to be very aware of their utilization rate for the technicians. I know in service industries, utilization rate for people uh, delivering services is a, is a major consideration for companies. And they certainly want to minimize, as you put it, the amount of bench time, so to speak. So yeah, this is uh, something that um, certainly helps with that, isn't it? it? It does, Michael. And I want to, you know, as you mentioned that utilization is a key matrix for uh, all the field service organizations, so service organization, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we learned is that there is a lot of interesting, funky measurement around utilization. And what I mean by that is that, you know, you have a resource, when you hire that resource, you have some goals in mind, how you're going to how you're going to use that resource uh, against revenue generation and et cetera. And a lot of time we see that people 
try to you know try to increase the utilization by uh, assigning you know non um, unnecessary work. So <laughs> let me okay. let me explain what I mean by that. Yeah, no, let's I do. Say I, let's say I'm a I'm a I'm a you know network technician, and so. You know, so my utilization, I would say my utilization, the best utilization for me is when I'm working on network projects. And Correct. but if I'm driving every day, three, four hours, now am I utilized? You could argue that, yeah, you know, the guy is busy, I, you know, the technician is busy doing whatever. But I would argue that that's not utilization because the person is driving or doing other things not the core competencies that you hired for that are not directly related to their their as you said their core uh functionality that's exactly right right yeah yeah we used to refer to that when i uh, was in field service and managed field service organizations we used to refer to of course as direct time versus indirect time and um, I can certainly understand and appreciate that if people are being being measured ba based upon the utilization rate for direct time, then a lot of times it's really tempting to give people uh, other activities that can supposedly be counted as direct time and therefore increase the utilization rate, right? Right, exactly. So, I think uh, in addition to helping with the utilization rate, you also kind of helped kickstart the gig economy didn't you yeah and you know the, the utilization rate was was one of the one of the thing that we always keep we, we like to bring to our customers to understand that you know having a fixed cost resource for a fuel service organization it's very very challenging because you will always fight against you know, bench time and overtime situation. And the, you know, you mentioned gig economy or, you know, we call it the on-demand workers. Right. This is where you can actually don't have to worry about bench or overtime. And you can, you know, whenever you have an event that's tied to your revenue generation, um, you can, at that time, you can assign a resource uh, and you only pay for the job getting done. And very rare in our platform, usually uh, customers uh, get a technician within 25 miles radius from the from the job location. So usually there is no um, travel uh, involved, not much of a travel involved uh, here either. So it's really optimized for uh, getting the job done and aligning the revenue with, with the yeah. cost. Well, you know, we've talked a little bit about what, you know, why you started this and what the impetus was. And uh, can you can you expand a little bit, do you think, on how Field Nation fits today into the field service ecosystem? Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting how it got started during the, um, during the, you know, really bad recession, but how does it benefit organizations today as well? Yeah, the say, same route. Uh, mm -hmm you know, exist today, what, what, where we started, you know, helping, you know, uh, helping people, in, helping independent contractors to find work opportunities um, and, and for businesses to find qualified workers anywhere, anytime with the right skill set. Um, now we focus primarily in IT and telecom space and okay. IT telecom hardware space more specifically. Okay. So, so if you if you are an organization that needs a job done, uh, you know anywhere in the North America, uh, U.S. and Canada specifically, um, and actually not one job, but think about you need to upgrade, install, maintain some sort of hardware mm -hmm. uh, in ten thousand locations, and how do you find? hundreds and thousands of technicians that are located close to the proximity of the job where it needs to be done, but within that schedule and in that scale. And Phil Nation 
you know, does a really good job finding the right tech at the right place with the right qualification. And so that's sort of the value prop on the, on the buyer side, the company business side. For the provider side, we call them provider, the service provider, the, the mm -hmm. contractors. The value prop is, is, is simple. You know, we bring opportunities. You don't have to sell, you know, you don't have to spend money in marketing. We bring business to you and we, uh, you know, we are at the, you know, when the job gets done, we are the back office management as well. So we provide the payment processing. Um, we provide the risk mitigation with the insurance. Uh, we issue the 1099 tax forms and stuff like that. And we do it all through, you know, uh, a technology between a web platform and a mobile platform that makes the whole thing super simple, super easy. A technician can run their entire business on our mobile app, accepting job, managing job, getting paid, uh, looking for new opportunities. Everything happens on a mobile platform. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you, you, you referred to a situation where there might be thousands of, of um, technicians needed. I can certainly envision how for most organizations, that would be nearly impossible to staff up for. So having a resource like Field Nation available to help fill those slots when they're needed uh, has got to be incredibly valuable to organizations like that. That and that ex that's exactly what we do really well, Michael. So if you yeah. need one technician and you have a lot of lead time, um, that you could you could go to you know different job boards. You can go do a lot of things, Google search, what you know, LinkedIn, whatever. But what we do really really well is this largely distributed work happening in hundreds and thousands of locations. And you need a very specific technical skill. It could be networking, cabling, digital signage, point of anything within the IT telecom umbrella. And you need this, you know, techs in hundreds and thousands. And the job may be short term. You know, it may be it may go from hundred you know few few um, few hours to uh, maybe a day or so. Uh, doing it that scale and in that volume uh, in that large distributed geographic area, that creates a really, really unique challenge. And, and that precisely what we solve uh, really, really well. I would, I would say we, we solve it better than anybody else in the world. Yeah, I, I would imagine that you're also very helpful when different skills are needed to uh, complete one job, one say one long-term job, perhaps a move of you know a bunch of servers or something like that. You might need different skills to uh, uh, to be able to complete the entire process. Would that be correct? Absolutely right. Um, so you, you 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 know let let's say you know you, you know you need a, a point of sales machine installed. Not only you need a technician who knows point of sales, maybe you need cabling, uh, maybe you need somebody who knows printer work. Um, mm -hmm. All of that, you can get it from one place. Yeah, that's a great example that you just cited. It's really curious when you started this. Well, let me let me ask this question first. Are you able to say approximately how many uh, technicians you have access to right now in total? Yeah, we have over one hundred and fifty thousand technicians. Holy uh, moly! In our marketplace, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a pretty I I, I you know. In many ways, we are the largest field services provider, and but on a monthly basis, about forty to 50,000 50, technicians will get work from our platform, and you know at the end of the year we'll do, you know, a couple million work orders, um, and we will enable about a thousand companies, thousand businesses, uh, delivering those work in in the field. That's just uh, amazing to me. It must have been so. I, I'm sure you didn't have 150,000 people available to you when you started. No. <laughs> can, no. <laughs> can, can you tell us a little bit about your journey from when you started to how you got here today? Yeah. So you know, marketplaces like Field Nation, like you know, Airbnb or Uber. Um, mm -hmm. There is a classic chicken or egg problem like you know what do you get you do you get the 
demand side first or you get the supply side first and but uh, but the the really interesting thing about network business model like marketplaces is that once you get the virtuous loop going uh it kind of started to scale pretty organically um so in the early days you know our chicken or egg problem it, it took a long time and to solve that problem so we had to go recruit technicians in major metro areas and you know through you know advertisement phone calls and all sorts of you know crazy ways um we went back to the customers and we said hey you know we have techs everywhere um so that then the well first of all the techs would join and they would find no jobs on mm-hmm. our platform because there was no buyers on our platform so we'd go find few buyers promising that hey there's techs on our platform please join and the buyers will come to our platform and they'll find by the time they join that the, some of the half the providers are gone big because they couldn't find any jobs oh wow so, okay so yeah it took a it took a few years for the buyer side and the supply side to kind of start working together but the the beauty the power of this model michael is that once we once we are able to connect the buyer side and the provider side in a certain market that 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 virtuous loop starts to work itself to bring other people through word of mouth so sure. imagine you know a technician you know getting jobs from our marketplace having a great experience getting paid on time um they will go talk to their colleagues and friends and family like hey um you know here's what happened um i got a job but then also when they go on site and and work with other workers mm-hmm. um, other technicians they they talk they're a community so they will talk like hey of where, course. where are you coming from well, I, I came from field nation tell me more about that oh it's pretty cool it's an online you know it's an online marketplace and i can do work whenever i want to work and i can bid on jobs that fits my you know skill sets and i get paid on time and you know i i have a storefront with my profile on it and you know i get rated by every every buyers and you know my reputation is pretty well all of that kind of stuff that kind of keep bringing today michael we get you know 600 to 1000 technicians signing up with fuel nation on a weekly basis and oh Lord. predominantly yeah. it's word of mouth yeah that's just simply amazing i'm i'm just very very impressed and also pleased with your success congratulations it's a great and let story. me tell you, let me tell you something michael this is <laughs> this is really interesting in last couple of years because you know as i i've been talking with our customers and you know uh, you know other prospects and they all kept talking about you know labor shortage we cannot hire enough technicians and and all that all that stuff you know it's not only a field service problem i think the labor shortage is a is it is everywhere right mm-hmm. um on the other hand i tell our customers and our prospects that we get 600 to 1000 technicians signing up on a weekly basis and they, they will scratch their head and what's happening michael is that this covid crisis was another accelerator oh definitely for mm-hmm. for people to leave it's not like people are leaving you know the job and they're all retiring in florida right they just don't want to no. be in in a 9 to 5 anymore they they want to work whenever they want to work we had a provider event a technician's local event in minneapolis and i met so many people who said hey i left my job and now i'm i'm doing i'm doing you know either a full time gig with phil nation like that's all i do or i you know i'm a retired person i do few hours here and there um but it's the flexibility that's the number one thing um our our uh, contractors our technician you know appreciate the most well what strikes me uh, is a couple of things one is that it gives people an opportunity to uh, oftentimes i think improve their work life balance 
so they probably don't need to be so concerned um, uh, about overtime and about uh, having to work on holidays as a mandatory part of the job. So I would think that um, having access to Field Nation as a independent worker would be very appealing from that standpoint. Um, and I think it also perhaps gives people an opportunity to pick and choose and do what they like to do best. Totally. So, yeah. 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 I, you know, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Like, yes, I I meet our technicians. They're like, hey, I don't want to work nine to five. I want to have more flexibility, and I want to work whenever I want to work. Usually, that means I don't want to work, you know, eight nine hours a, a day. But mm -hmm. then I also find equal number of people who like. I want to build my own business. I want to work as much as I want. And, and I have so many examples of, I'll give you one example, Michael. I mm -hmm. met a technician who um, sent me a note about a few months ago who said, hey, Michael, I want to tell you my story. I was laid off twice during COVID. And then I found Phil Nation. And after a year later, not only I'm surviving, I'm thriving with Phil Nation. And I, I have so much work. I, I, I'm, I'm working, you know, nine, 10 hours a day. And I started to build my own team of, of um, you know, technicians. Technicians. Mm -hmm. And they're going in multiple states. So I'm actually building a business. And I, I keep meeting entrepreneurs in our marketplace. They're extremely driven, uh, extremely hardworking, and they choose Phil, they chose Phil Nation uh, to, to build a business, uh, and, uh, and, and Phil Nation provides that. So the story of Phil Nation is that if you want to work as much as you want, you can do it with Phil Nation. If you want to work as little as you want, you can do it with Phil Nation. Yeah, that's a great example as well. And I'm glad you brought that up about the entre entrepreneurs, because I was going to ask you if you work strictly with independent contractors or if there were circumstances where you're actually working with a group of people or a small company. And it sounds like that is also true. Absolutely. Both. both. Yeah. We work with both. And and a Very lot good. of time it'll be like, hey, in the, it, it's the person started as an independent contractors and then they found so much success then started to build a a team around them and the service company. Well, that's gotta be really exciting for those people. Wow. Totally. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, you know, given today's economic uncertainty and whether there's gonna be a, re a recession or not a recession, is it gonna be big or is it gonna be small and other factors, uh, what do you think about Field Nation's role in helping organizations to kind of, um, you know, steer their way through this um, unpredictable economic climate, so to speak? Yeah, great, great, uh, great topic, a very timely topic, right? Because everybody is holding their breath. This is interesting, Michael, like the, I haven't in, at least in my lifetime, I haven't had a situation that everything looks really good in, you know, employment rate and yeah. full employment and everything looks really good. It's still, the business leaders are all holding their breath and, and thinking that something is going to go really wrong in the next 12, 18 months, right? Yeah, so, I know. Well, so, ho hopefully it's yeah. not a self-fulfilling prophecy. So Hopefully not. And, yeah. and even there is a recession, hopefully it's a short-lived and it yeah. comes back. Um, you know, bounce back quickly. But I'll, I'll tell you one example. I met a customer um, a, in 20, I want to say 2021, mm -hmm. uh, last year, probably mm -hmm. middle, of, middle of last year. And they said, hey, um, I want to tell you something. Uh, we, during COVID, we almost lost all our business all our all our project got put on hold oh sure um and you know customers stopped doing business stopped paying us all that kind of stuff but then six months later everything was back on track and we didn't miss a bit we didn't say no to any business because we had phil nation with us 
And so we were able to scale it down as fast as our customers stopped doing business with us. And as soon as the work came back, we are off and running right away. We didn't miss a bit because we were plugged in with Fuel Nation and we were able to scale down, scale up as much as, as, as little as we needed to with the Fuel Nation you know, workforce behind us. So one of the things that I would encourage the field service leaders to think about is that in a recession, the challenge is gonna be, you know, how do I manage my cost? That's gonna be number one thing. And how do I say yes to more businesses? Yes to opportunities, right? And so to reduce cost, how, how can you do that? There's, you know, I can talk specifically about the labor cost one is, you know, if you have fixed labor, I think, you know, a lot of companies are going to look at fixed labor and going to say, are they, what is the utilization looks like? Are they optimally utilized or not? And stuff like that. That's an obvious one. They, they're going to make sure. a decision based on that. I think a lot of companies will, I will encourage them if they don't already, is that look at the outsourcing cost. If you're not directly managing the, um, labor in the field, but you're rather outsourcing it uh, to a third party. Well, there is a margin stacking. The old days, 15 years ago, there was no way to get direct access to 100,000 technicians in the field, but today there is. So if you're going through multiple layers of outsourcing to get to a local labor, qualified labor who can deliver the work, um, then I think, you know, you know, I think the, the, the executive should think about, you know, is there a better way to do it? Um, so that's on the cost saving side. The, the, mm -hmm. the second is, how do you say yes more, more, more opportunities, right? You want to, and this is again, where if your organization only supporting one type of work, call it networking, can I say yes to digital signage? Can I say yes to um, point of sales? Can I say yes to security? Can I say yes to kiosk? Um, and again, I think, you know, our customers, we enable our customers to say more yes. And if you have, if you already have a relationship with the XYZ company, a retail, and you are doing their security work, you why don't you offer cabling work? Why don't you offer networking work? Why don't you offer point of sales work? If you if if Field Nation can provide that qualified resources who can be there and do all the work that needed to be done, all the work meaning within the IT and telecom umbrella, mm -hmm. um, and that's a pretty good that's a pretty good um, new revenue stream uh, for companies. Um, so. So yeah, you know, mind being mindful of cost, cutting, uh, you know, cutting out the the costs that are um, that can be reduced, and then saying yes to more opportunities. Uh, if you have a network of hundred thousand qualified techs that can do a variety of different uh, field service work. Well, I think you've just highlighted three really important things. If I can summarize them, and hopefully I don't. Uh, minimize them, but you've highlighted the fact that the service that you provide allows companies when necessary, unfortunately, to scale down if that becomes a necessity. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, you've enabled them to scale up really fast when that happens as well. And then the third thing is that you're really giving them an opportunity, as you said, to expand their market and uh, exactly right. start doing more things than they perhaps thought they could do. Right. So, I mean, what a what a what a great story and a great uh, tool for people to have available to them. So, again, congratulations on uh, you know growing a successful and vital business. I think. Thank you. It's it's been fun. Yeah, I'm sure it's fun talking to you about it. Actually, <laughs> um, so a, a couple of things before we go. Um, is there any? You know, you're you're talking to field service people all the time. I imagine you're in touch with field service executives frequently. 
what kind of trends do you see coming in field service or what are people, what are some of the executives you're in touch with telling you that they think is coming down the pike for field service? Yeah. So, you know, we do a lot of work in retail environment and the multi-site retail environment is a, is a major vertical for us. And, you know, Michael, there are two things happening there. One is um, the labor shortage that we just talked about. That's creating a tremendous need for retailers for automation. You know, I was telling a, a colleague of mine that I went to a store, I think it may be Home Depot over the weekend, a couple of weekends ago, mm -hmm. and there was only one lane open with a person standing and all other checkout lane is just completely automated mm -hmm. because it's hard to find workers you know there's a labor shortage so there is going to be there, there is a tremendous investment going on going in retail for all sorts of automation uh, not just uh, you know self checkout but warehouse automation uh, the back office automation, um, you know, even, you know, things like the, the price tags are becoming digitized so that you don't have to send somebody to go change the, the price of a cereal box. And you can just press a button and digitally change the, the price across the store or maybe across the whole, uh, whole chain. So mm -hmm. there's a tremendous, tremendous investment going on across all retail sectors for automation. The second thing is um, digital experience. I can tell you, Michael, when the COVID uh, started the lockdown, there was a little bit of a panic in the retail um, sector that, hey, is the brick and mortar retail going to survive this? Because we, you know, everybody, it, it, Everybody started to deliver stuff and we felt like mm -hmm. this is the end of re you know, brick and mortar retail as we know, and everything is gonna be e-commerce. What's so surprising is that if you uh, read some of the uh, reports on retail investment, there is more retail in-store investment now than ever before. And it's becoming, yes, you will have your online channel, but people want to still go to retail to experience stuff. They want to feel it, touch it. Um, and I was, you know, I, funny thing is that I was, I was doing a, I was talking with my wife last night and, um, and, and I asked her like, do you, she doesn't enjoy shopping. But every mm -hmm. now and then she enjoys shopping. And I asked my wife, honey, do you like online shopping? Or do you like to go uh, to a store? And her comment was, if, if this is something like, you know, I don't, you know, if I, if I have a, you know, kind of a recurring stuff, then online is good. I don't want to sure. need to go touch it, feel it and stuff like that. But if I'm buying something special, if I'm buying something, you know, that I really care about, um, I would go to store. So the, on, the, the retail, the brick and mortar retail is, is, has, has been growing for the last couple of years. And each of this retail store, Michael, now has more digital experience than ever before. It's not mm -hmm. your old retail where there's just you know boxes of cereal box cereal boxes and shelves of clothing and stuff like that there is digital camera and sensors and you know uh digital signage and you know automated you know a whole bunch of you know automated checkout and all sorts of stuff going in in a digital you know uh, uh, store in a store in a, with, to create kind of digital experience and so, you know, so for our, for our field service executives, those are the two areas for us to really think about, like how can we help retailers either to automate their retail store or retail back office, or how do we help our retail, you know, retail stores, um, retailers with 
with more digital experience in store. Yeah, it's a great point. And all that automation that you're referring to, I mean, we, all of us see it every day when we go to stores, right? Um, and even into restaurants, et cetera. But all of that means that, um, you know, there's some, there's some job security for field service because all of those products are going to need to be installed, repaired, replaced, upgraded. Um, so um, it's good news for the field service ecosystem, I think. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned brick and mortar too, and uh, we're running short of time, so I want to be quick here, but uh, I worked for Oracle back, back in the very early 2000s, and the demise of brick and mortar was forecasted, right, in the tech industry, uh, and it certainly has not happened. Uh, I'm with your wife. If I'm going to buy clothes, if I'm going to buy a pair of shoes, if I'm going to buy a washing machine, I'm going to the store. I'm, I'm not going to buy it online, right? So... Lastly, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to just uh, tell us about anything uh, significant that's coming up for Field Nation, any trade shows, uh, anything you'd like to uh, talk about briefly? Yeah, you know, there are a couple of really interesting things that we're bringing to the market. I'll talk about those. You know, the first um, is we call it the uh, certified talent pool. The idea is very simple, Michael, which is if you are a company and you want to create your own gig squad, you know, I mentioned we have 150,000 mm -hmm. technicians. There is no company, no matter how big you are, you'll ever use 150,000 technicians in the field. But how can you create a few hundred or a few thousand certified technicians network that are your gig squad. That's the idea behind it. Like every company can create their own gig squad on Field Nation. So we are creating a product around that. It's really exciting because when I talk to our customers, they get excited to think that they can actually have their certified talent network on our platform. And we can stand it up really, really quickly so that you can go back to your customers and say, I have, a, I have a network of technician that's as good or better than Geek Squad, right? That's the same, the, the, the Geek mm -hmm. Squad gives you this sense of trust and confidence. These people uh, know what they're doing and they are they're, you know, always working with me. They're representing my brands and stuff like that. So this idea of curating, vetting, and standing up your gig squad on Field Nation platform. That is super exciting. I'm really excited that we're, we're, we're bringing it to the market. The second thing is a product we call it Market Smart Insight. I told you, Michael, that we do millions of work orders through the system. Mm -hmm. And every work order captures hundreds of different data points from where the job is happening, what skill sets, what tool sets, uh, what the schedule, what the price point, um, was the technician showed up on time, was it late, all sorts of stuff, what kind of deliverable was there. So with this millions of work orders and hundreds of data points, there's literally billions of data, point, data points we have. Um, and we are, we, are you, we are mining this data to bring insight, unique insight to our customers so that they can, first of all, intelligently bid on projects. So before our customer goes on a, uh, you know, submit an RFP, they can really get into the, the you know, market smart insight to know how they can be more competitive with their bid. They can understand their coverage uh, profile with Phil Nation, and they can confidently bid on a project a very, very competitive competitively. And then once that they win the project, then the market smart insight gives them uh, uh, an intelligent way of planning the entire project and the delivery uh, with the market pricing, the scheduling, uh, coverage, and all that kind of stuff. So we are really, really excited about market smart insight. We actually launched it last year, and it, it got a really good uh, review, uh, tremendous market traction. Uh, so super excited about that. I think Market Smart Insight is one of a kind product in the field services today. Well, I think that's great. And what we here at Zupa are constantly talking about how valuable the data is that's being collected by 
by our software in the field. And I'm sure you've got uh, mountains and mountains of data that is equally, if not more valuable at this point in time. So good for you on that topic as well. So Manil, we're, we're running short of time now. So I just wanted to say once again, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend uh, this time with us. Uh, it's been a very, very interesting discussion and very educational for me personally. And I think that our audience, uh, listening audience is gonna find it um, very interesting and helpful as well. Thanks, Michael. Eric, you, you bet. Thank you. Eric, back over to you. All right, gentlemen, this has been great. Thank you so much for putting on a wonderful podcast today with great information. I agree with you, Michael. The listeners are going to get a, a tremendous value out of it. So, gentlemen, thank you so much. And, of course, our last thank you goes to the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to Zuber FM Field Service Your Way with Michael Israel. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when the guys come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. We humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review, as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you for listening today. For everyone at Zuper FM, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Zuper FM, field service your way. Insightful discussions and advice that help you position your field service operations as a powerful force in building enduring customer loyalty. And remember this, when you deliver excellent service to your customers, you're also facilitating their ability to provide superior service to their customers, which strengthens brand loyalty among their customer base as well. Thanks again. Please join us next time.